Welcome back to the Modern Day Mom Presents 100% Mommified. This is season two. We are, listen, season one was amazing. Season two is incredible. And so much has happened since season one. We won an award. This is our award. Modern Day Mom, our first award, which is major. And I became Mom 2.0. I'm a mom again. So it's exciting. And this season, the guests are bringing they're bringing the truth, they're bringing reality, they're bringing life, and I'm really excited. And I had to kick off the season with one woman. And the reason why is because I think by kicking off with her, it, it just enters the season perfectly as it's supposed to be. This is someone that I've wanted on season one, I've wanted at my events, and now we have her here, season two. It's Gwen Otto, she is a trailblazer in a lot of industries. But I think most familiar is the hair game. If you don't know Hair Center, and you live in Ghana, outside of Ghana, in the US, then I don't know if you have the good hair. I don't know. But she's a trailblazer, and she's opened the door for many women, and has inspired many women to reach for their dreams. So Gwen, thank you so much for honoring the invitation. Thank you so much, Vanessa. I'm totally excited to be here. Thank you. Okay, so Gwen, we're gonna get right into the conversation okay. because I, I follow you on social media and I feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit more through social. Obviously, social media is its own space, so you only get to know a fraction of a person. But one thing that always stands out is your confidence and your faith. Now, Gwen is also a mom. She's a wife aside from being a mogul that she is. Who was little Gwen? Was little Gwen confident? Did little Gwen have faith? Well, thank you so much, Vanessa. I am totally excited to be on the show for the first time. I've had the opportunity to experience you online. And I always say, whatever it is that you're doing, you're blessing a lot of women. And I feel honored that I'm on this platform today. Oh, thank you. So back to your question, who is Gwen? Gwen has always been a dreamer, but not very confident. Okay. Not the, not the Gwen now, but you know, since uh, growing up, I was exposed to many things that I felt intimidated by, okay. and that sort of curbed my appetite to pursue what my greatest calling was. And even when people would give me compliments, I never accepted it. I wow. was always very negative about it because wow. I was always comparing myself to other people that I felt were better than I was in terms of how they spoke, how they walked, where they lived, which schools they attended and all sorts. And so I, a significant part of my youthful life was spent being timid. Okay. And of course, I was just a church goer. I did not understand scripture. Right. As you've evolved into a woman, when did that switch happen? Was it overnight? Was it gradual? Was it maybe when you had your kids? Or maybe when you got married? Or was it when you became the mompreneur when you realized, listen, I actually can have it all and I do have it all. Wow, so I, I think the shift happened gradually, number one, but I think what really made me shift totally was when I found myself in a place where I knew I was not supposed to be. Okay. Now this was a place that was dark, a place that was not good for me and it was not a good fit for where I wanted to see myself. Okay. Now, when I found myself in that place, I said a silent prayer and said, God, if you would take me out of this situation, I promise you, I'm not going to be a side worshiper. I'm going to go fully in. And that's exactly what I did. And why did I find myself there? I found myself there because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to belong. I wanted to also be recognized and seen to be doing it too. But you see, sometimes when we pursue some of these things, we don't end up where we're supposed to be. We end up 
in places that mm -hmm. will not edify or help us to grow. But when this happens, you don't have to be too hard on yourself mm -hmm. because this was what enabled my turning point to a care. Right. If I didn't go through that setback or I didn't go through that dark place, I probably would have just been swinging and not been really convinced about my faith and about where I stand in Christ Jesus. So I think these things are absolutely necessary to grow you and move you to your next level. Because, you know, when you say the setbacks, all of us have setbacks. Yeah. And then we have moments where we feel like, what's next? Am I going to come out of this? I've had those moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, what's next? <laughs> How do I navigate the next situation? But one thing that has been faithful to me is being faithful, in a right. sense. And that is, and I always say, like, between you, there's someone else on socials who, when I was going through things a couple of years ago, and I would wake up, and you've put your scripture up, and she's also put that helped me so much. So you've been through your trials and tribulations and through that, you're helping so many people. And I, I know you know, but I don't think you know how many women that you are like inspiring to be able to get up every day and say, I can do this. Even when I see you, your hair center, then you'll go to your son's game, then you'll go somewhere because you're building something because you yeah. know Gwen is always doing something and I'm like how and then but you do also put up that not every day is going to be perfect absolutely yeah not every day will be perfect so in those imperfect days and the days that even though you have your faith you still feel broken how do you say it's okay it's okay because you see um, we have to be intentional on who we allow to speak into our life who we follow on social media, who we call friends. And on the days that I feel low, sometimes I'll pick up the phone and speak to one of my friends. I could speak to Evelyn, I could speak to Nanaya. And these women, okay, build me up and inspire me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's my sister Nadia, mm -hmm. and she would remind me of something. Because you know, when you're facing some of these setbacks, you tend to forget yourself. You tend to forget the good that has occurred before. Yes. You're so focused on your now and how yeah. depressed that you are, that you know, you're blinded. So you need people who know you and who love you to remind you. Yes. So it's always important to surround yourself with the people that know you and the people that wish you well. Right. If you surround yourself with people that are negative and people that are probably in the same situation and believe that is your end, you're doomed because yes. what you believe believes you yes. and what will become your reality. It's true. Okay, so hair center. Yes. Let's jump into hair center. Hair center, you started from your, the boot of your car. You were, I think, like the first to bring this hair game into Ghana. And you've evolved so much. The brand has grown just like it's crazy. <laughs> And then you also have your events, yes, which also trailblazing, because after you started, then it's like people got the really, oh, I can do that too. How do you feel sometimes when you see, and I know, I know you're going to say, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> but how do you feel being that woman that people really look up to? It's an interesting question, and I don't know if you thought this was how I was going to answer it, but I'll answer okay, it. Okay, let's see. Um, I never really see myself in that way. Mm. I feel I'm just doing what I have to do mm -hmm. and moving along. So it's, it's actually refreshing when I receive some of these messages and they're like, oh, I, I don't do the same thing as you do, but how you do what you do has inspired me to do things differently, yes. and I'm winning at it. Yes. And all I say is, well... Glory be to God, because we're just vessels, right. okay? And God can pick anything right. and use it for his will. Right. And so I've never really seen myself as somebody who is um, selling hair extensions or doing anything. I, I find myself thinking that is a ministry, that's a greater purpose. And how I do these things, and the kind of help that God gives me is intentional because he wants me to communicate a message to someone that needs it. Right. And I think not knowing who I am and what I am doing keeps me humble. Yes. 
And I also have siblings who are always speaking into my life, like my brother George and Gerald would say that, um, Gwen, we love what you're doing, but there's so much more that you can do. Yes. And you always need to remember whose you are because the world will make you believe that you are complete. So if you're not yeah. careful, you will go to sleep or you become too arrogant and that will blind you right. to growth. Wow. Growth, motherhood and growth. Motherhood, growth, career. How do you balance? You never used to show the kids. <laughs> You never, no. and then recently you've opened up more, which I love, yes. because it gives a different insight into your life. You're very intentional about the time you spend with the kids, making sure I'm at the football game, we have like mommy-daughter dates. You're intentional about it. Yes. How do you balance it? And you're a wife. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It is tough. Um, I, I don't think we're ever able to really balance it because sometimes we win at some and then we mm -hmm. lose at some. Mm -hmm. I would never describe myself as the kind of mom that you would come and find at the kitchen table or the dining table helping with homework right. because my impatience will get the best of me and I'll say, you know what, if you can't understand what I'm teaching you, I'm out. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I, I, I think I fail in those areas. Okay. And I, I think where we fail, we should not even be too hard on ourselves because th that's why we, we have humans who give us the capacity that we lack. And so we have helpers. Mm -hmm. So if there's a private teacher that can help with tutoring, and we can afford it, mm -hmm. I invest in that because that's an investment that will help yes. my plan as far as my children are concerned. Right. And I also try to be there in the ways that I can and not make excuses because we, we have to simply understand something has got to give. Yes. You probably have to cancel an appointment so that you can make it to your son's football game. Yes. And this makes them so happy. And you realize that when you do this, there's this fulfillment that you get. Yes. That you don't, you, you will not even get that from your work. Yes. Okay, when you do these for your children. Yes. And I always say they are growing up. Mm -hmm. Some of these moments that we have are too precious to mm -hmm. let it pass. So we need to honor them when we have the opportunity. When we are called, right. let's try to honor it. If for some reason we cannot, it's mm -hmm. okay. That's what I was about to ask. In those moments that we cannot, because I know as women, we become very hard on ourselves. I know me, if I miss something for Aaron, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've missed it. And it could be the simplest thing. Yeah. And he'll be like, oh, but mommy, today there's so-and-so after school. And I'm like, I can't make it at that time, you know? <laughs> and then I feel bad. Yes. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We yeah. don't win at it all. It's life. It's a part of life. Right. So we, we need to give ourselves some grace. Right. And they, they do forgive. They and do. that's why I, I always say, you know, we as parents also need to communicate with our children. Right. You know, it's not just sit down, shut up. I'm an adult. You don't mm -hmm. know what I'm doing. You mm -hmm. don't understand. Mm -hmm. Try to let them understand. Try to have conversations with them so that they can understand the journey and they can be more empathetic. Right. Okay. Because you're not doing this only for yourself. If it's your son, you're doing this so that in the future when he's married, he can appreciate his wife. Right. Okay. He can appreciate his like daughter. This. He can, you know, think about it differently because right. of how he was groomed. Right. Thanks to the kind of parenting that he had. Right. You have how many? Two? Two, yes. One boy, one girl. One, one boy, one girl, a 14 and a 13. Back, oh, so you did back to back. Back to back. Back to back. <laughs> what would you say is the difference yes. in raising a boy and a girl? Hmm. I'm a boy mom right now. Okay. Going on being a girl mom. Mm -hmm. What would, what, because I know for me, Aaron, being a boy mom is all I know. Yes. He's very independent in his own way. He's very courageous. He's very, he's, and he's confident. Yes. And sometimes it's like, take it down a notch. <laughs> um, Where do you think he gets that from? But the funny thing is growing up, I was, very, I was timid. Okay. I wow. was quiet. Wow. I was not a talker. I remember my auntie would say when I would come to the house, sometimes they'll forget I'm there. 
wow. because that's how quiet I was. My confidence didn't come until I think I fully entered the industry. Wow. Yeah. So it's not for me. <laughs> I, I call it the Moses calling. The Moses, yes, yeah, you, you know, know, because, yeah, I was, I'm the, and I think not in real life, but on an ordinary day, mm -hmm. I'm very reserved. Wow. You know, I'm very to myself, you know, but he is always like, out there. he's and, so confident. Wow. Um, but then, so I know how, I've known how to manage that, but then now, how am I going to manage if I have a girl? Is there a difference in how you raised your son compared to your daughter? I think what hurts us is when we differentiate them. Okay. Okay. And then we say, oh, the girl should go to the kitchen. The girl needs to know how to cook. Mm -hmm. And a man doesn't necessarily have to know that because he's out on the field go in to find food and then we will be at the other end to process it. You know, mm -hmm. the world has changed and right. I think we need to raise our children in the best way that we know possible, both male and female. Okay. Um, girls are sweet, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But you know, when I walked in today, Aaron did something which I know my son would not do, which was he came in, he hugged, he was so, he was so sweet. Right. You know, and I said, that, that's, that's, that sweetness that sometimes we sort of um, align with only women. Yes. Men also have it. Men probably right. don't show it as much. So as parents, we need to give them everything that we're given to the girl okay. and vice versa. Because this enables us to build them to face the world right. in any way possible. Right. Yeah. And I think that's something, even when it comes down to chores and things, yeah. I've never been... Like, oh, you're a boy, so you only, let's say, throw out the garbage. It's like, yes. no, you're involved in... Well, let's see till you have a... Let's I know, wait that's and the see thing. when you have a girl. Then it might be like, okay, well... <laughs> but I'll try to, like, just blend it all together. It all. It's very important. It it's very important. And, and, and sometimes it's not our fault. Right. Because this is what our parents did. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up with a lot of brothers. Right. And I never saw my brothers in the kitchen. Right. And I grew up also wanting to be like them. So I was pretty much like a tomboy. Okay. Where I said, I also don't want to go to the kitchen. Oh, wow. Okay, because the boys are not going, I'm also yes. not going. And that has its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. But I think we all should do the best that we can okay. as parents for both our male and our female children. What would you say has been the highest moment of motherhood for you? Highest moment would be my kids telling me that we have not prayed today. Oh. Okay, and knowing and understanding that they know God, and then they fear God, not out of guilt, mm -hmm. but out of a reverence and knowledge of who he is in their lives. And even sometimes I could tell them, you know, I made you. Mm -hmm. They look at me and say, yes, you gave birth to us, but it's God who made us. And it mm -hmm. makes me so proud. To know that, yes, I can give my kids education, we can give them whatever. Right. But the biggest thing that we can give our kids is the knowledge of God, the fear of Him, and that dependence on Christ. And I think that has been wow. my proudest moment and the moment that I knew my job is truly done. Wow. It's not complete. We still have to keep on at it. But one thing I know that has been built in my children, and I suppose for many others, right. is the fear of God. Wow. Wow, I like that, because Aaron is very prayerful. Wow. Um, which is good. I love it. Sometimes, because I'm prayerful, but I didn't think he would pick up on it. You know, so mm -hmm. even with this podcast, he wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, what, like how can we involve you? And then, so we started the modern day toddler prayer. Wow. And every month he narrates his own prayer from his head and I record it and I've been sharing it and giving it to moms like for their kids to like recite. And every month he reminds, mommy, we didn't do the prayer. And he even wants to do more. Like, can we do more for the month? That is amazing. So yeah, that's something I'm, I'm very proud of. So I love that you touched on that. But now what has been the lowest moment? of okay. this journey of motherhood? 
I think my lowest moment has been when my daughter said to me, why am I like this? Because mm. um, she has sickle cell. Oh, okay. okay. And whenever she has crisis and she's in pain and she can't go out to play with her friends. And it's, it's, it's very depressing to see her in that state and to know that sometimes when the sun is out yes. and the water is too cool, she can't go into the pool because of the, you know, the different conditions because her crisis would come. Mm -hmm. it, it, it breaks my heart. And I think those are the things that get to me. But I thank God for my faith yeah. because I know there's nothing that's impossible for God. And she'll be okay. Of course. You know, she will so be. I think that's, that's pretty much. Gwen, you come from a family of, listen, bosses. <laughs> and the funny thing is I never knew Gio was your brother. Wow. Until like a couple of years ago. Because I met Gio nine years ago. Like when I first came to Ghana, nine, ten years ago. Um, so it wasn't until a few years ago, yeah, that I realized, oh, the connection. How important is family to you? Family is everything to me. Family is very, very important. Um, my brother, Joe, has always been my guide, always my friend. My brother, Gerald, he designed the Hair Center logo, wow. which today is everywhere. I yes. mean, whenever we're out, people ask, how, how did you do this? We love mm -hmm. your logo. My sister Nadia is a creative director now going to be COO. Oh, wow. Congrats, <laughs> Nadia. Wow. That's coming up soon. Oh. My brother Charles, Michael, they are all hands on yeah. and very supportive of the business. So, family has been essential to me. My mother is a very prayerful woman who always groomed us in prayer and trust and dependence on God. And my dad has always been. My late dad yes. has always been entrepreneurial. He's always been a trailblazer. Um, Ghana Video City. The yeah. older people that watched this would know him. And so we grew up in that kind of family where we had spirituality and entrepreneurship. So it's a good mix. Yes. Because we all know how business is. It's, it has its highs and lows. But knowing about Christ always keeps us hopeful. Yes. And having that family love and dependency also keeps us grounded and not alone. Right. And being a wife. Oh, yes. <laughs> How has being a wife helped you evolve into the woman you are today? Okay, I've, I've, apart from my timidity, I've always said I've been a dreamer, okay? And when you're a dreamer, you always need the right kind of support. Mm -hmm. And people that are not dream killers, right. okay, it's because those people do exist. Yes. A lot of times people find themselves in relationships where um, one partner will kill their dream. And you know how love is when you're connected to someone and you love them so much, they're able to speak into your life yes. and whatever they speak is gold yes. to you. And I think my husband has been very supportive. He mm -hmm. is somebody that has allowed me to dream. He supports me. He sees me and right. he, he, you know, even quite recently he said to me, Gwen, I don't think you know the level of influence that you have. Yeah. And I was just laughing in my head. I said, look at him, love making him say nonsense. <laughs> but you it's know? the truth. <laughs> but so, so I, I said to myself that partnership is absolutely very important. And so we need to pray yeah. that God connects us with the right people that will help us to build what he has purposed for us. Yes. Oh my God, I, I could have this conversation <laughs> for hours. Yeah. But my, my last question to wrap up is, what advice would you give to the modern day mom? I think you are the modern day mom. You are mommy. We said in the beginning, entrepreneur, um, wife, um, author. Like there's so, you are everything in one. So what would you give to that modern day mom who aspires to do to do yeah and to be okay so i'm going to go to my father's quote he said that youth is a blessed time but the blessedness of youth is only and fully realized when it has passed you know when we're young we have so many dreams and so many aspirations and especially in this digital age 
we find ourselves under so much pressure to be, mm -hmm. to become, to belong. I want you to slow down. By all means, have that dream, but take it, you know, in small bits. Mm -hmm. Block your mind, your eyes, and your ears mm -hmm. to the noise, because there's so much noise. There are people that would um, make you believe that you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they themselves are not doing anything. <laughs> it's true. And social media, it's a really big lie because mm -hmm. people can pretend that they are things when they are not. Right. So we ought to pray for a spirit of discernment as women so we are able to tell the difference and we will know who to follow and who not to. And more importantly, we need to understand scripture. I think we always want a quick fix, right. okay? So we pick up one quote mm -hmm. and then we break it down in the way that we understand or go to church on Sunday and automatically we're charged. Mm -hmm. But we really are not able to build ourselves. And this is why whenever the storms come, we want to immediately give up. Mm -hmm. We want to stop that business and start doing something else. Yes. Let's take our time, yes. let's follow the right people and let's understand scripture and the word so that our dependence will be very strong on God and we will not break in the midst of the storm, but we'll have the hope to prevail and understand that this too shall pass. Yes. Oh, Gwen, thank you so <laughs> much for today. You're most welcome. I am so honored to have you on and especially to kick off the season with you. So thank you so, so much. Let me give you a hug because oh, I'm so grateful. More. Thank you more, thank you more. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been amazing. Thank you, Love it, loved it, loved it, loved it. Bye. bye. <laughs> her, that's, that's her bye. That's her signature bye. <laughs>